Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to control addressable LED strips using an Arduino Nano, Bluetooth and Android. Keep watching to find out my super simple method. Hi, David here from DakitaRPG.com. Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, make sure to hit subscribe as I've got lots of DIY electronic project and programming tutorial videos coming up that you won't want to miss. Today I'm going to be building on my previous tutorial where I connected an HC05 Bluetooth module to my Arduino Nano by adding some WS2812B addressable LED strips. First of all, I'm going to use my basic Bluetooth sketch to double check that the Bluetooth module works and is able to send and receive messages. Then remove the USB to cut the Arduino's power before adding the LED strips wiring into the circuit. What I'm doing here is connecting the LED strips 5V and ground to the Arduino's 5V and ground pins. However, it's worth noting that the Arduino pins cannot supply enough milliamps current to sustain a long LED strip at full brightness. Each LED uses around 30 milliamps of current at full brightness and the Arduino 5V pin can deliver around 500 milliamps maximum. If you're trying to power more than 15 LEDs from the Arduino pins, the lights will flicker and won't be as bright as they could be. Now you can slightly combat this by manually reducing the maximum brightness of your lights or not lighting all of the LEDs at once. Even though that approach is not ideal, it will be what we're doing in this tutorial. So after the 5 volt and ground has been connected, I connect digital pin 3 of the Arduino onto the data in line for the LED strip. You may think this is enough to connect the LED strips with the Arduino, that we could simply add some library such as fast LED and go, but unfortunately there is a little bit more to it. If you tried to send data to the LEDs from your Arduino right now, you would not be able to read the Bluetooth data at the same time. This is because the fast LED library dislikes things that interrupt it and also partly caused by the WS2812B LED strips not having a data line for clock timing. However, there is a fairly simple solution to this as the Bluetooth module still has some pins that we haven't yet used mainly the state pin. The Bluetooth module state pin is very easy to understand. It sends a low voltage signal when there's no device connected and a high voltage signal when something is connected. This can be used by the Arduino to create an interruption when receiving data and also to allow the fast LED library to send data to the LEDs when required. So for now, I connect the state pin to analog pin 1 on the Arduino, plug the USB back in and move over to the Arduino IDE on my computer to program the board. In the Arduino IDE, I first make sure that I'm going to program the right board by double checking the board processor and port. Then, I make sure that the fast LED library is installed. Simply go to sketch include library, manage libraries and search for fast LED. You can install it from here if you don't already have it. You should also make sure that the software serial library is installed as I use that for managing the serial communication with the Bluetooth module. As you can see, I've prepared a sketch. It's my previous tutorial's advanced Bluetooth sketch with some minor changes to include the fast LED library. As a quick side note, I'll pop some links in the description with all the code featured for anyone that wants it. The code might look a little bit overwhelming at first, but I'll break it down now so that you know exactly what everything is doing. First off, we include the Bluetooth serial and fast LED libraries. 
Bluetooth Serial is a basic library I wrote to manage Bluetooth Serial communications. Its main purpose is to store Bluetooth Serial data until a termination character is received, which in this case is a semicolon. After this, we have the toString function. This allows for us to send preprocessor constants such as firmware version, defined here, as strings back to the connected Bluetooth device. After that, there is some basic fast LED setup code to define the data pin used to control the LED strip, the type of strip, number of LEDs, brightness and frames per second, followed by some global variables for the LED colour data. In the main setup function, there is a small delay in case the Arduino somehow crashes at boot just to give us time to reprogram it. Then, the analog pin 1 is set as an input as the state data of our Bluetooth module will be sent to this pin and we want to read it in our main loop function. After this, there's some more setup code for the fast LED and Bluetooth serial libraries. The Bluetooth serial begin function takes the Bluetooth module's baud rate and a boolean to determine if the regular serial communications line should be opened on the same baud rate for its two arguments. In the main loop function, we store a boolean to determine if there's a Bluetooth device connected by reading the value that has been sent to analog pin 1. Then, if there is a device connected and the Bluetooth serial line has an update available for us, we'll process the Bluetooth command and flush the Bluetooth serial buffer. If there is no device connected to the Bluetooth module, then it's safe to allow the fast LED library to update. We can then call any functions that update our desired effects and then end the function. Now at this point, you might be wondering what is a Bluetooth command? As mentioned earlier, my Bluetooth serial library stores incoming data until it receives the terminating character, which is a semicolon. This is done to allow for more flexibility in how the Arduino communicates with the connected devices. Each Bluetooth command should be formatted as either command name semicolon or command name colon command value semicolon. When processing the command data, we can compare the command's name or value to other strings of our choosing and then very easily change the LED's colours or alter variables that control how the LED's animate. The main drawback of this approach is that the change in LED animation isn't instantly noticeable as you have to connect the device, perform the changes and then disconnect the device to see the changes. However, this can easily be handled in the app or software on your controller device. Now, once the program has been uploaded to the Arduino board, I can connect to the HC05 Bluetooth module from my Android device. I can send the desired strings of data and then I can disconnect the Bluetooth and see the changes to my LEDs in action. For this example, I'm using S2 Terminal for Bluetooth on Android, which you can grab for free from the Google Play Store. If you would like me to do some tutorials on how to build Android apps that control your Arduino via Bluetooth, then make sure to let me know in the comments below. Also, make sure to hit subscribe as in my next video, I'm going to show you how to build and debug an HTML game or app on Android. So, if you made it this far, I would like to thank you for spending your time with me today. I'm David from DakitaRPG.com and you are awesome. See you next time. Bye.